What's up, guys? I am Ashley Gavin, and I am your father. I'm Elena Joy. I am mommy. And I'm Mac Injimi, your hot teenage brother. <laughs> baby. Mac is baby. We are your chosen family, because you don't have a gay family, and you need a gay family. Every week, we bring a topic to the family dinner table, from gender dysphoria to monogamy to how to figure out if someone is into you. Listen to Chosen Family every Wednesday on your favorite podcast app, or watch full episodes on YouTube to get the full family experience. Chosen Family is a part of the Forever Dog podcast. Podcast Network. This episode contains explicit language. Welcome to Mom and Dad Are Fighting Slate's parenting podcast for Monday, July 10th, the Decoding Car Seats edition. I'm Elizabeth Newcamp. I write the homeschool and family travel blog, Dutch Dutch Goose. I'm the mom to three littles, Henry, who's 11, Oliver, who's nine, and Teddy, who's six. We are currently between homes and living in Atlanta, Georgia. I'm Zach Rosen. I make another podcast that's called The Best Advice Show, and I live in Detroit. I'm dad to Noah, who's five, and Ami, who's two. I'm Jamila Lemieux. I'm a writer and contributor to Slate's Care and Feeding Parenting column. I am mom to Naima, who is 10, and we live in Los Angeles. Today on the show, we are in the midst of summer road trip season. We thought it would be good to step back and talk about car seats with someone who actually makes car seats a ton of fun. I'm going to be talking with Jamie Grayson, who some of you may know as the baby gear guide. He breaks down everything you need to know about keeping your kids safe in the car. Then, of course, we'll return to do a round of recommendations, and we'll see you back here in a second. This podcast is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Whether you're driving, cooking, or doing laundry, Progressive knows the podcasts you listen to go best when they're bundled with another activity, much like how their Progressive home and auto policies go best when they're bundled. Having these two policies together makes taking care of your insurance easier and could help you save, too. Customers who save by switching their home and car insurance to Progressive save nearly $800 on average. That's a whole lot of savings and protection for your favorite podcast listening activities, like going on a road trip, cooking dinner, and even hitting the gym. Yep, your home and your car are even easier to protect when you bundle your insurance together. Find your perfect combo. Get a home and car insurance quote at Progressive.com today. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. National average 12-month savings of $793 by new customers surveyed who saved with Progressive between June 2021 and May 2022. Potential savings will vary. What's up? It's Kaylee Cuoco. When it comes to travel, we all have a happy place. I just went to my happy place. I just went to Maui, and it was truly amazing. Priceline has always been about getting you to your happy place for a happy price with deals you really can't find anywhere else, like up to 60% off select hotels in Costa Rica or five-star hotels for two-star prices in Cabo. Go to your happy place for a happy price. Go to your happy price, Priceline. All right, I'm back and joined by Jamie Grayson. Jamie, can you tell the people who you are? I am Jamie Grayson. I'm a child passenger safety technician, and I've been working in the baby gear industry for almost 20 years. I first found you when I was pregnant <laughs> with my first. <laughs> and I don't even know like how, but I feel like you have existed in my child rearing <laughs> life <laughs> without ever. I've, I've just kind of always been there. Yeah, you've just always <laughs> been here. But for, for our listeners that don't know you, like, how in the world did you become the go to guy for baby gear, car seats? Like, how are we here? <laughs> I, many years ago, <laughs> I was on tour with the best little whorehouse in Texas, and the tour closed down. I went off and did a production of Cats again and then went back to New York and took a survival job at Bye Bye Baby back in 2005. And it was right when Bugaboo first came to America and it was on Sex in the City and everybody was losing their mind because it was such an expensive, fancy stroller. So the original owners of Bye Bye had this idea to hire actors to demonstrate product on the weekend. So I was hired just to talk about a peg perigo high chair and the bugaboo frog three days a week. That's all I did. No training self-taught on everything. And I got very bored. Yeah. So I learned everything on my own um, in terms of strollers and self-trained on car seats. And now I know how much I was actually telling that was horribly incorrect information. <laughs> um, but um, started doing like mass stroller demos to people on the weekend. And then I was there four and a half years and then went, and worked at a birth education center for a year 
And then the day after I put in my notice, I was in the Best of New York magazine that year as the best baby gear expert in the city. So then it just kind of spiraled, but I was unemployed and slowly figured out how to make a living. And now, I mean, you, I think, bring such a service in that I feel like we can trust the stuff you put out there. Like you have real thoughts on lots of these products, but also have spent time like really getting to understand car seats, how mm-hmm. we use car seats, why, why they're important, the stupid things that people are doing with them. Mm-hmm. There's plenty of stupid things. Yeah. <laughs> there, There's a lot. <laughs> yeah. So I am a mom of three and am like hyper focused on car seats. I was a lawyer in a former life and, uh, I'm just like so worried about car safety, but even I am just like super confused by car seats and what is out there and when we're supposed to have kids in them and what, you know, there's like state laws, but then there's also crash tests and all these kind of things. So why is it confusing? Do you have tips or tricks on how to make it less confusing? And of course I have a bunch of questions to ask you, you know, specifically, but like overarching, like why are we all so confused? I really think one of the biggest problems is manuals are not written clearly enough. (laughs) And you can look at like all the labels on car seats that have to be there due to our standards and whatnot. But when you read these manuals, there, there are things that even text in the space where like, what do you, this wording is so not clear. What do you mean? You don't, you may not have to lock the seatbelt, but you can like, I, w- I wish manuals were more cut and dry. Yeah. Like I think more that's, that's the biggest. Yeah. But also there's that, but also vehicles are a problem too. Like you'd think like minivans and all these big SUVs would be like ideal for installing car seats. And for a multitude of reasons, they are not. No, sometimes so they're the worst. Tricky. And, and from one model to another, they're different. Like mm-hmm. where the latch is located and, Um, you know, should you put a seat in the middle and all of that? It's very complicated. Um, What are the most important things parents should look for when they're choosing a seat? When they're choosing a car seat in the beginning? In the beginning. So Um, let's talk about babies. Like you, so if you are, let's say you're going to start with like a typical infant seat, like the bucket with the handle and not a convertible. I think, you have to start at this base assumption that every car seat on the market has passed these minimum standards. So, you know, or else it couldn't be on the market. So technically the safest car seat on the market is the one that you install correctly, that fits your child properly, that you use correctly every time, you know, yeah. because you can pay $500 for a car seat with all these fun, fancy things. But if you're not installing it correctly, it won't do its job. Um, so operate on a base level that no matter what car seat you get, if it's installed correctly, you're good. Okay. So, you know, you want to take your budget into account, um, with an infant seat, you know, if you're going to put it on a stroller, you kind of have to make that decision, uh, regarding what stroller you're going to get if you need adapters. Um, but a lot of times as, as the technology comes out with these new infant seats, you're going to get, um, things like rigid latch that typically will make a car seat way easier to install. Um, you know, you have things like built-in lock-offs for seatbelt installation, which help greatly. You have things like load legs, uh, which really help absorb and eliminate a lot of that crash energy in yeah. a collision. I'm a big, 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 big fan of a load leg. Uh, but if you have a car seat that has it, sometimes you can't use it in your automobile. So, yeah, I was going to ask, like, should you be taking into account the car that you drive as well when mm-hmm. looking? Yeah, you you always have to read the manual for your car seat, but also read the manual for your automobile. Okay, and I think one of the things that I will typically recommend for parents is when you're looking at your car seats, if you have a question about your vehicle, call the car seat manufacturer because typically they have spreadsheets of what vehicles their car seats work better in and what vehicles they have issues with okay um so that's just a very good place to start i didn't even know that was something i could do are there like services or people that you can look for to come help you with installation or teaching about installation yeah so um i am a child passenger safety tech i was first certified i think 11 years ago to be honest but you can go to safekids.org Okay. Um, here in America. And if we have any Canadian listeners, you can go to a site called CIPSAC, C-P-S-A-C. 
and they will help you find the tech. You're installing it, but you have someone that is looking over what you're doing and just double checking. Are there like one or two things that a lot of people get wrong about installs? A lot of people will use uh, lower anchors and seatbelt together because they think they're double safe and that's incorrect. You only use one or the other. There are only two car seats on the market that allow for using both uh, seatbelt and latch, uh, Nuna Pippa infant seats, and then a click foom fin forward facing install. Not getting the seat tight enough yeah. is also pretty bad. And a lot of people don't know how to test tightness when they install. You just test at the belt path. Uh-huh. And a lot of people will like grab the butt of the seat and wiggle it. And that's not where you test it. And just harness positioning is yeah, a big problem. Yeah, can we talk about too. that? I, I mm-hmm. mean, you post about that a lot. Um, and it is the thing. I would say for me that I like walking away from having done research on this that I'm most worried about is like where that uh, clip across the chest is supposed to be mm-hmm. and where the shoulders are, right? That's kind of the things that we're, we're working yeah. on. What are some tips for that? I mean, obviously people should look up their seat. You can look up images, but yeah. can you kind of briefly give some people some tips? Sure. So with harness placement and again, always read your manual because there will always be an exception somewhere. That's what we have learned in car seats. There is no black and white with anything, but 99.99999% of the time in a rear facing seat, you're going to want that harness at or below the shoulders of the kid. And that is because when you think of a rear facing seat, every, if you're in a frontal collision, everything will go towards that point of impact. Okay. So by having the child, in the harness at or below the shoulders, it's going to keep them from sliding up the shell of the car seat. It keeps them down inside it. Right. So that is for rear facing. Um, With that harness, uh, to make sure it's tight enough, um, you're going to go up to the clavicle and try to pinch a fold in it. We don't put fingers under the harness anymore. Um, And a lot of people, when they're tightening the harness, they don't pull the slack out at the hips. Yeah. And that is very, very important because if you have all that extra slack, this might feel tight up here, but your harness is actually very loose. And then the infamous chest clip, like (laughs) it's, I always joke at my, my like in-person events. I'm like, the chest clip is the number one reason we do not put pictures of your kids in car seats on Facebook. Yes. yes um, because exactly. if it is slightly wrong, the people come for you. They and do. it's because people have really incorrect information about what a chest clip actually does. Yeah. And people think it's there to like help distribute crash forces and help keep them in the seat. And in a roundabout way, yes. But a chest clip is just a pre-crash harness positioning device. And it's, yeah, it's there keeping the harness on the shoulders, To keep the harness right? on the yeah. shoulders. Yeah. And, you know, these memes go around with the skeleton, Mr. Bones yeah. and all that. And it's like, you know, the, if, the, if the clip is too high, yeah. it could lead to like <laughs> neck damage. With an infant, that is something to definitely be concerned with because it could obstruct their airway. Right. Um, if it's too low, everybody's like, oh, it will just damage your internal organs. It could happen, but we don't really have data to back up that it does. The biggest problem is if the chest clip is down here, that harness will just right, slide Right, it's really off. wide and falls off, yeah. yeah. What most techs look at in seat installs, and if a kid is harnessed correctly, a chest clip is way down at the bottom yeah. on a list of importance. We obviously still want to keep it armpit to armpit, but it's not even a standard on our car seats. We technically don't have to have them on our car seats in America. We just use them. So that's good to know. So people worry more about the slack in the in the shoulder and less position about the and tightness, <laughs> and then just put that chest clip on, in the armpit area, armpit and area. you're good. The armpit um, area for people who are, let's say, new to car seats. Those of us that have have been having them for a while know that there are rear facing, there's forward mm-hmm. facing, there's convertibles. Can you give us a quick crash course in the in the life of the car seat in your car? Oh, but I sure can. (laughs) So there are seats that are like rear facing only seats, which are the infant with the handle that are like a bucket you can pop on a stroller. A lot of them go to 30 or 35 pounds. Now you're nuts. If you're going to carry around a 35 pound child in a bucket, that is very, very heavy and it's not going to feel great. So typically you'll transition out of an infant seat anywhere from like eight to 10 or 11 months. Sometimes people can get a little bit more length of use out of that if their kid does is not as big yeah um but then there are convertible seats and convertible seats are rear facing and forward facing rear facing seats uh typically will have a max rear facing weight limit of like 
40, 45, up to 50 pounds. We do have a, a lot of seats do go to 50 in America now, a few go to 50 in Canada. Forward facing, when you rotate them, um, your harness max is going to be 65 pounds here. Height is all over the place, but yeah. the, the, the max you can get in terms of weight is 65 pounds uh, in a standard car seat. Um, and then you would go into like, you know, a forward facing harness to booster situation or just a high back booster. Um, and then they're in that booster until they pass the five step test to go into a seat belt alone. I was like rear face until it was embarrassing, you know, get until you, until you max out. Um, and always felt good about that. So those of yeah. you out there rear facing, keep doing it. I want to talk about the five point test. Cause this is where I'm confused. I yeah. have an 11 year old. Um, he's still at a booster. When does he get to leave that booster, Jamie? <laughs> okay, so this is, and this is going to be different, obviously, with every child, but a lot of vehicles as well. Yeah. Um, because you may be fine in one car, and in another car, you need a booster seat, just based on seatbelt mechanics and the depth of the seat. So the five-step test is, can you get your child out of their booster seat, and can they sit with their back flat against the automobile seat? Okay. Do their knees break the edge of the automobile seat naturally? Do they meet that curve? Now, some people include, do their feet rest on the floor? Some do not. Okay. So it's mainly back placement, knee placement. Now, when they're using the seat belt, is the seat belt going over the strongest, like hard parts of the body up here at the clavicle and then low on their hips? Okay. okay? So those are four. And the fifth one is like the big one. And is it, will your child sit still? Right. And if they're going to like fall over a nap or are they going to move the seatbelt behind their back? Um, they need, a lot of it is emotional maturity right. with kids. So they have to sit in place every time properly and not just like wiggle. What about getting to sit in the front seat? 13 years old. Yeah. No yeah. 13 plus meeting all of these. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because most, they I hopefully mean, by thirteen, <laughs> they wouldn't be in a booster. Um, yeah. But yeah, the the problem is airbags up okay. there. So yeah, thirteen is minimum. That's it. I mean, it's fine with me. I actually enjoy a hard and fast rule. It's easier for me to be like, sorry, that's something that that we can try out when you're thirteen. Yep. Okay, so thirteen for the front. The five point. That's so great to know. How often do we need to replace car seats? So the idea behind expiring seats is that eventually plastic will break down uh, and the foams in the car seats can break down. Uh, on top of that, as we develop better car seat technology, it kind of keeps you at the forefront of right. that. Um, now, in terms of replacing a seat, if you're in a collision, uh, Again, read your manual because some car seats adhere to NHTSA guidelines mm -hmm. regarding uh, replacing your seat. And some car seats are like, no matter how minimum, if it's a fender bender and everything is fine, you still have to replace a seat. So it's all just going to be there in that little book no one pays attention to. And I will say with the replacement after an accident, um, my insurance has paid for ours to be mm -hmm. replaced. Um, so definitely check with them. Like, don't, don't not do it. Uh, yeah because because you're worried i know they're yeah, expensive they are um, they're very expensive and that's like you know you mentioned like what do you do with old seats and stuff and you can trash them cut the straps out spray paint them do whatever find a tech in your area a lot of techs will take old seats to use as teaching seats oh awesome for yeah. students um but another good thing to do is like target does it i think walmart does it too now like yeah. a lot of small retailers are doing it just like hold on to your old seats and then you take them to the store and trade them in for a store credit. Yeah. And they typically will do it like once or twice a year. Sometimes they say they recycle the seats. I've heard questionable things about this, but a trade in event is always worth it. I think target at some point did just baby credit and we were able to go and get a gift card for baby things and give it to a mom. Like that was mm -hmm. awesome too. So that's a wonderful tip. All right. I definitely want to talk about stupid things people are doing with their car seats or any baby <laughs> gear, really. Parenting that you hacks. See on, yeah, yeah. So tell me, can you name some of your, your favorite stupid things? And I sure why, can. I sure can. Stupid. Um, I, I am very old. So I started to dive into TikTok because I realized not many people were doing car seat stuff on there. And yeah. My audience demographic on TikTok is wildly younger than 
Facebook and Instagram. So as I'm learning about it and developing this platform out, everybody is starting referring to me as the car seat guy. And they tag me like I am the car seat (laughs) and bad product police. I literally get hundreds and hundreds of tags a day on TikTok and videos. But the videos I see of like right now, I think the two biggest ones that are a problem are like putting the uh, front wheels of your stroller or your Duna into the shopping cart to use it as like one really long like boat. You have to steer through the store. I know exactly what you're talking about. And uh, if you don't know, you can just find Jamie on TikTok or Instagram and you'll see he's he's posted a video of it. But definitely go check it out. But in a lot of people, like I get the idea of the convenience of this, but let's look at like Duna, for example. You paid $500 for a car seat (laughs) that turns into a stroller. Why aren't you pushing it and like pulling it behind you with the shopping cart? Like it's not hard. And the problem is specifically with Duna's is... That raises the car seat up and can put your baby at an incorrect angle. But you have to think of like the baby's airway as a straw. And if they're at the wrong angle, it shuts that straw off and shuts their airway off. So it can put your baby at a wrong angle. But also those front wheels on strollers are not made to withstand the pressure needed to turn shopping carts. And it can snap the wheels off or break them. And you're not covered by your manufacturer because that's not proper use. Yeah. So you're screwed. Uh, so that's a really bad one. And then people buy seats for the wonderful wagons and put them into shopping carts. And wonderful has made statements about this not being okay. Don't put extra seats in shopping carts. Don't put your baby infant seat on top of a shopping cart. I was going to say, what about that? Yeah. Mm-mm. But those no. little those little hooks work so perfectly. <laughs> yeah, until you break them and you can't no, lock it into your car seat base anymore. Oh, my gosh. Okay, well, Jamie, this has been so fun and also very informative. Where can people find you? On Al Gore's internet. um, You you can find me. I still use Facebook quite a bit. It's just Jamie Grayson there. um, And then on Instagram and TikTok, it's the Jamie Grayson. Jamie, is there anything we missed that, you know, if, if didn't get out there would be a disservice to listeners? I think I think a lot of people like don't beat yourself up. You know, car seats there there's a reason why we go through days of classes and training and we install seats all the time it's because we are specialized in this. And like with anything else like in parenting, like parenting is hard, there are no rules, etc. and it's like don't beat yourself up if you find out you did something wrong with your car seat, just adjust it and do it better. That's so it's, lovely. Don't, yeah. don't, don't, don't go completely chaotic in your head. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. Mm-hmm. So do it, learn and, and do better yeah. the next time. I mean, this is my job. And when my sister's twins were born, I went and stayed with her for six months and I was tired out of my head. And one time we went to Target and like, we get them out of the stroller. We put the buckets in the bases. Everything is good. We drive home 20 minutes. I had not even buckled them in the car seats and they were babies, <laughs> like loose. And like, if I can do that, yeah. and this is my thing, yeah. it can happen to anybody. And obviously we don't want that, Yeah. but don't beat yourself up if you like F up once or twice. Yeah. That's such a perfect place to end. Well, Jamie, thank you so much, everyone. Go follow Jamie. He has all the information uh, online. And this was such a good reminder to check your car seat manuals. <laughs> Read them. What's up, guys? I am Ashley Gavin, and I am your father. I'm Elena Joy. I am mommy. And I'm Mac <laughs> Injumi, your hot teenage brother. <laughs> baby. Mac is baby. We are your chosen family, because you don't have a gay family, and you need a gay family. Every week, we bring a topic to the family dinner table, from gender dysphoria to monogamy to how to figure out if someone is into you. Listen to Chosen Family every Wednesday on your favorite podcast app, or watch full episodes on YouTube to get the full family experience. Chosen Family is a part of the Forever Dog podcast. Podcast Network. Hey everybody, it's Tim Heidecker. You know me, Tim and Eric, Bridesmaids and uh, Fantastic Four. I'd like to personally invite you to listen to Office Hours Live with me and my co-hosts, DJ Doug Pound. Hello. And Vic Berger. Howdy. Every week we bring you laughs, fun, games, and lots of other surprises. It's live. We take your Zoom calls. Music. We love having fun. Excuse me? Songs. Vic said something. Music. Songs. Music. I like having fun. I like to laugh. I like to meet people who can make me laugh. Please. 
subscribe now. Let's move on to recommendations. Zach, what are you recommending? This is something that we refer to in my house as CYB, choose your battles. And my wife and I remind each other of this when I feel like it's often her reminding me now that I mention it. Um, When I'm kind of getting bent out of shape about something that the kids are doing and it's just kind of a waste of energy because it's like, who cares? Like, choose your battles. Don't nitpick when you don't have to. For example, the other day, I opened a brand new bottle of bubbles for Noah and she had just poured the whole thing out within 30 seconds. And I was about to be, and I did start to, you know, get like, Noah, come on, that's such a waste. Like, you know, we spend money on these things. Like, why are you, why are you pouring it out so quickly? And she was just like, Zach, just CYB. <laughs> um, and it, it's just a reminder to kind of reset and remember that, yeah, I guess I could also just like take that bottle of bubbles back in the house and squirt a couple of, you know, squirts of dish soap and fill it right back up again. So it's just like, relax, man. CYB. Such a good reminder at this point in the summer. (laughs) (laughs) Right. Yeah, we're just getting started (laughs) with bubble time. Uh, Jamila, how about you? All right. You know me. I've got another adults only recommendation. Sorry. Um, This is a show called Dave that airs on FX. It's been on for some years. I'm late to the party. But I watched it at a friend's house the other day and ended up binging two seasons. Dave is so good. And also, if you're a Seinfeld fan, you'll know that Dave, uh, the actor who plays him, his name is Dave Bird in real life. He created the show with um, one of the former writers from Seinfeld and Curb. So it definitely has some like some of that. But it's, you know, but it's shot beautifully. And it's 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 such a great show. A good reminder to do some non kid stuff, too. Yes. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. Parents. I am recommending a book called LOL 101, A Kid's Guide to Writing Jokes by David Roth and Renee Shaw. And I'm not sure if every kid goes through this, but all three of mine have. The phase where they are trying to figure out jokes, and it's tough because the jokes they tell are terrible. And then even as they start to figure it out, they just can't really get there. We are in full-fledged that for sure with Teddy and Oliver can nail it some of the time. Um, This book came up earlier in the summer, recommended by one of my favorites, Everyday Reader on um, Instagram. And I immediately had to get it. And it has been amazing. It is sort of like a reference guide um, to how to tell jokes for kids. And so it has some funny jokes in it. It explains wordplay and how Mm. jokes are all about surprise. It also has a really great section about how, like, telling a joke is a risk. Like, every time you go up there and say something, there is a chance that somebody doesn't get it or they don't think it's funny and how to deal with that. And I think that is it's such a good skill. Like, the reason we want our kids to tell jokes is because it's a little bit about, like, the intelligence of can you figure it out, but it's also about this taking a risk. And I just think this is a a great little book. And what I've noticed is that uh, Teddy's jokes haven't really gotten funnier, but he is certainly trying to figure out, like, if he hears a word that has two meanings, you know, he's like, oh, what kind of joke could I make out of that? Like, and so I feel Mm. like it's just getting his brain thinking a little more about it as opposed to going through that whole phase where they just like say things and then you're like, well, do I just laugh to make this end? Or, you know, (laughs) do do I try to explain this to them? And then I'm like a boring adult. So go check out LOL 101, A Kid's Guide to Writing Jokes. All right. That's it for our show. Please subscribe to our show, leave a rating and review, and of course, please tell your friends. This episode of Mom and Dad are Fighting is produced by Rosemary Belson and Maura Curry. Shasha Leonard is the voice of our listeners. Alicia Montgomery is VP of Slate Audio. For Jamila Lanou and Zach Rosen, I'm Elizabeth Newcamp. Thanks for listening. What's up, guys? I am Ashley Gavin, and I am your father. I'm Elena Joy. I am mommy. And I'm Mac <laughs> Injimi, your hot teenage brother. <laughs> baby. Mac is baby. We are your chosen family, because you don't have a gay family, and you need a gay family. Every week, we bring a topic to the family dinner table, from gender dysphoria to monogamy to how to figure out if someone is into you. Listen to Chosen Family every Wednesday on your favorite podcast app, or watch full episodes on YouTube to get the full family experience. Chosen Family is a part of the Forever Dog podcast. Podcast Network.